country. Since the ANC came to power, inequality among blacks has risen as the class gap has opened up. People power is being taken over by a black elite, an extension of the black middle class created by the apartheid regime as a buffer to real change. This is Cyril Ramaphosa, former head of the Miners' Union and today a member of the ANC's national executive and a millionaire businessman, seen here with mining magnate Nicky Oppenheimer. It was Ramaphosa who negotiated the ANC's historic compromises. By using black faces in the boardroom, the old power structure has gained access to the new political establishment. In terms of South Africa's policies towards the rest of the world, I read that in Bangkok this year you said we are willing to deal with any region irrespective of the internal policies of any country. Is that, is that correct? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, what would have happened to South Africa, though, if that, if that had been applied to the ANC uh, during the struggle, uh, if that attitude of tolerance had been applied, surely um, apartheid might have lasted longer than it did. Uh, there's a, a real fundamental difference with apartheid. There is no country anywhere in the world where discrimination and oppression is part of the legal system. The real resentment of the world and why South Africa was regarded as, an, uh, as uh, enforcing an evil system is the fact that racism was entrenched in the constitution of the country and in its laws. And uh, also, some of the Western countries are lagging behind countries like in the Middle East, where in a country like Saudi Arabia, students enjoy benefits I have not seen anywhere in the world, where students study free and in university they are actually paid no less than $300 a month for studying free. You don't find a thing like that in the West. Perhaps the price that's paid, though, is uh, Saudi Arabia's appalling human rights record. So. What does human rights record mean? Does poverty of a large section of the people, disease, ignorance, medical services that they cannot afford, is not that part of a bad human rights record? President Suharto has demonstrated... That's the same argument put forward by the Indonesian dictator, General Suharto, whose regime is responsible for the deaths of 200,000 people in East Timor. Suharto has given large amounts of money to the ANC, and President Mandela has given him South Africa's highest honor. <laughs> the forced removal of millions of people from the land was the most brutal weapon of South Africa's white rulers. Today, wealthy white farmers continue to control more than 80% of the agricultural land and their existing property rights are guaranteed in the new constitution. We have set up a claims court which is busy examining, investigating uh, firstly, uh, whether people can be given land from state land. And we're make, making bro progress as far as that is concerned. Secondly, there were people who were removed from their own land by force. And where those people can be returned to that land, we are returning them. In fact, less than half of 1% of farming land has been given back. I think it's fear, basically. They're frightened, you know, just as the old government was frightened to upset white farmers. Um, this new government is almost as frightened. And I don't know why there, there are less than 60,000 white farmers, that's all, who own all this land. It's not the whole population of four or five million whites. Most of them, for example, are, their land is mortgaged to the land bank, which is basically the government. The government really owns most of their land. But they're in debt to the, to the land bank for 23 billion rand. 
Um, and if the government simply foreclosed on those loans, they would have the land back. Then they say, oh, we can't do that because we rely on these people to produce. We don't. The vast majority of those farmers are hardly productive at all. Most of our agriculture is produced, or produce, comes from 3% of the arable land. Now that 3% is owned by a tiny group of extremely wealthy white farmers. The unbreakable promise of the ANC's 1994 election campaign was the reconstruction and development program known as RDP. It was this that would bring to the people of South Africa the basics of a decent life so long denied them by apartheid, water, housing, electricity, education, health care and land. In the words of the Freedom Charter, it would be the restoration of dignity. Two years after the election, the RDP office was closed down as the ANC adopted a conservative economic program known unofficially as cautious Thatcherism.